In the activities for episode 19, you created a graph to represent the position of a block on a spring. You probably recognized this graph as showing you a cosine function. You might have even pointed at the screen and shouted, ooh, a cosine wave. Well, today we'll look at how this oscillating spring can in fact create a cosine wave. Here we have the same code we used in episode 19 with a couple of features added. First, we've set a speed in the x direction. This is the speed that our wave will move in the x direction. Next, we've set up a list for the points that we'll use to draw our wave. In Python, a list is a collection of items that we want to group together. To learn more about lists, click on the link in the description below. The first item in our list is a single sphere created at the same location as the block attached to our spring. In each pass of the loop, we add another sphere to this list using the append command. Append is a fancy word that means add this thing to that list. Each of these new spheres will be created at the block's new position. Then comes the important part. We need to move each sphere in the wave to the right. So we set up a for loop. This loop repeats itself for every item in the list called wave. For loops are a great thing in Python because we don't need to know how many items there are in the list. It will simply carry out these instructions once for each point in the list called wave. So we move each point forward based on the horizontal speed that we set earlier using good old distance equals speed times time. When we run the code, you can see each of these points moving to the right at a steady pace. Each of the little spheres in this wave is moving at the same velocity to the right, so the shape of the wave is kept consistent. Now you can also see that the wave disappears as soon as it reaches the right edge of the screen. That's thanks to this little block of code here that deletes any point in the wave that passes the edge of the screen. This is a useful feature since it keeps the display at a reasonable size and keeps the computer from having to check on points that we don't need to worry about anymore. Now, getting back to the animation, you can see several things that are important about this wave. First is the speed of the wave, which we set earlier to a value of 1. This means that each peak in the wave passes by one block on the grid in one unit of time. If we change the speed to 2, each peak in the wave passes by two blocks on the grid in one unit of time. Next is the period of the wave. You can determine the period of the wave by watching a single point on the screen and measuring the amount of time between peaks hitting that same point. Lastly is the wavelength of the wave. You can determine the wavelength of the wave by counting the number of squares between peaks in the wave. If that's too difficult to do while the wave is moving, you can decrease the animation rate, take a screenshot of the animation, or change the while loop's condition to stop after a certain amount of time. There is lots of physics to explore with this wave animation. You have now learned how to create a wave in vPython. Follow the link in the description below to complete a set of activities to help you learn more about waves.